Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for another Airbrush Asylum live stream. In today's live stream, I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about air pressure, so the PSI that you're running with your airbrush, and what I tend to do with different models of airbrush and different needle sizes to obtain the best performance out of that particular airbrush. So I've been getting asked um, a lot by our customers and students alike about you know what pressure I'm running, um, even what sort of thickness I'm running the paint. So we can get into that at a later video, but today I just want to focus a little bit uh, on air pressure and what I recommend for certain particular airbrushes that I'll show you today. So let's get into that. Before we do, um, just quickly, happy Father's Day to everyone um, for the weekend. For all you dads out there, it was my first Father's Day, so it was pretty special. So um, apologies for the delayed post, but um, we're trying to get back on track now. Also, the cassowary uh, video will be done very shortly, so I'm going to start uploading that in the next couple of days. Um, it does take a while here. We have really bad internet, so I do hope these live streams are, are, are clear enough and informative enough for all of you people and they don't drop out too much. So. Hopefully our internet in this country gets sorted. We do pay ridiculous prices and we have extremely slow speeds, but that's another whole debate and it's not airbrush or art related, so we just can that for the moment. But um, yeah, let me just uh, switch this camera around and I'm gonna show you a, a little painting that my daughter Indigo did for me for Father's Day. Then I'm gonna show you an artwork that I'm working on and then we're gonna run through some of that uh, air pressure talk. So just give me two seconds, I'll flip this camera around. So we have a little canvas here. So this is done by my daughter Indigo. She's only four months old using her feet. So she's done a great job. So I thought I better feature that, especially if she's watching. So. Hello to her and uh, my partner Meg, who I'm sure we will introduce you to shortly. Now this is the latest piece of artwork that I'm working on. This is actually on a bit of timber, so extremely different. Now the way I've prepped this is I haven't actually sanded it. All I did was I um, blew off all the dust and I sprayed a transparent base. So this one here by Trident. All right, so I sprayed that over. You can spray that with a normal airbrush. So I used a, a 0.5 mil needle, or if you want more coverage, you can use like a mini spray gun or touch up gun. So whatever you, um, whatever you have access to. And what I did was I sprayed that transparent base over to seal that timber because we want to work um, on top of that using the Trident airbrush colors, okay? So I virtually sprayed that on and let that dry. And then you can see here, there's a bit of a chalk line. You can just see it. It's actually a um, couple kissing, a married couple. So they wanted to do something special for their anniversary. Um, so you can see here, I've got a bit of a reference shot here. So that's what it's gonna look like, except we're just gonna do this in um, black and white. All right, so. So it'll be interesting to see how this comes up, but the Trident paint, as you can see, is working really nicely on there since that's been sealed. And um, we can also still see the wood grain effect through that. So this one will just get a um, spray pack clear at the end, just a matte varnish, all right, to seal it off. Okay, so let's get into what we really wanna be talking about, which is, I've got some airbrushes here. So just some different airbrushes. We've got some from Segola and some Iwata airbrushes. So hopefully this will cover um, a few different brands and, and some of you will have one of these particular airbrushes. So let's start with the Eclipse from Iwata. This is an HPCS. This runs a 0.35 needle. Okay, so for this particular airbrush, I would run, if you want general purpose airbrushing, I'd set your uh, regulator at about 30 to 40 PSI. Okay, so that's perfect for doing wall murals, t-shirts, that sort of thing. Now, this airbrush, a lot of people don't think you can get fine lines with it, but believe me, you can. You can get really nice fine lines. If you want fine lines, you need to over thin your paint, especially, now I'm just talking about water-based paint here, so automotive might have to be another discussion, but for water-based paint, so like your Createx, your Trident, um, yeah, a lot of people are using Vallejo, I'm not sure about that one, but um, definitely Createx and Trident paint. 
Run it at about 30 to 40 PSI if you want really good coverage. Um, also, if you're doing T-shirts and wall murals, I'd probably run at a one-to-one -one mix. For detailed work, then you can add a bit more reducer and uh, run sort of, say, 30% paint to 70% reducer, okay? And then you can drop your pressure down. So if you are going to thin it out, drop your pressure down and you can still paint at about 15 to 20 PSI, okay? So 30 to 40 for your, your basic airbrushing, 15 to 20 PSI for your detailed airbrushing. And with all of uh, my airbrushes, I do run with the air cap off to expose the needle. This will allow you finer detail, okay? So that's the Eclipse. Now moving on to the CMC Plus Custom Micron. So this has a 0.23 mil needle in it. Um, now, this is a little bit different to a lot of the other um, airbrushes because it has the MAC valve on the front. So a lot of the Iwata models you can get with the MAC valve. Now, the benefit of this is I don't really need to adjust the air coming into the airbrush as such. I can actually just adjust it on the front. So I can still have the air pressure, say, even at 60 PSI, but I can drop this right down to as low as 5 PSI. Now, obviously, if you're going to run really, really low pressure, again, over thin your paint. So make it extremely thin so that you get less tip drying and it will actually flow nicer. It will mean that you'll need to uh, go over the top of a, um, a line maybe three or four times, um, but still running it thin is going to be beneficial. Okay, So for something like this particular airbrush, like I said, you don't need to um, adjust the airflow coming into it. You can just adjust it on the MAC valve on the front and run it anywhere from, say, 5 to 20 PSI. Okay, So that's the CMC Plus. Sorry about this rain noise in the background. Hopefully you can't really hear it that much, but um, good old Melbourne weather. It's about 10 degrees here today, so it's bloody freezing and it's meant to be spring, but anyway. Okay, so this is a CMC, uh, sorry, CMSB Micron. This has a 0.18 mil needle, so this is the finest needle that uh, you can get in the Iwata range. So this particular airbrush does not have a MAC valve. As you can see, it's a side feed. I use this for detailed artworks and illustration based artworks. For something like this, I would run at 15 to 20 psi, so 20 psi max for something like this. Okay? And again, you know, run your paint really thin. Now, moving right along, the Segola X Tech 100. Now, this doesn't have a cup on the top, it's just got the little inkwell. This runs a 0.2 mil needle, so nice and fine. Again, this very similar to the SB, I would run at about 15 to 20 PSI. So that it does run quite comfortably at 15 PSI. Again, this is all, all the PSI that I'm explaining is to do with uh, water-based paint. So if you're using Trident or Createx colours um, and experiment with um, other paints, I'm sure they'll work just the same. This is the X-Tech 300 by Segola. This runs a 0.3 mil needle. Something like this, a general purpose, if you want it for general purpose airbrushing at about 30 to 40 PSI is great. Um, again, if you want detail, then you can turn that pressure right down. So the, look, majority of the rule is 30 to 40 for um, big murals and stuff like that and t-shirts, so you get less tip drying. But then if you want more detailed work, then you can turn your pressure down and just over thin your paint. So when I'm running at say 30 to 40 PSI, most of the time I'll run the paint either at one to one or almost if I want extreme coverage, um, I might even turn the pressure up a bit more, say 60 PSI, and I'll run the paint straight out of the bottle, okay? So depending on what, what you're doing and what you want, we'll determine that. Now this is the Segola X-Tech 500. You can see all the others uh, were gravity feed airbrushes, one side feed. Now this one's a suction feed. Okay, so this runs a 0.5 mil needle. So, look, majority of applications that I'd use this for are bigger applications. Um, so, for that particular purpose, again, I would um, increase the air pressure and run my paint a bit thicker, and um, that'll give you nice coverage, all right? But, again, if you want fine detail, do the same as before. Over thin your paint and reduce your pressure down. You may struggle a little bit running this at about 15 to 20 psi, so I'd probably say about 30 psi would be your uh, minimum on this one. All right?
So that gives you a bit of an idea and an understanding on air pressures. Just flip that camera around. Hope that helps you guys out a little bit. Um, so if you enjoy this sort of thing and it's your first time here, we'd love to have you as part of our community and uh, so feel free to hit subscribe. We do try and do regular videos once a week. Sometimes that can be once every week and a half. <laughs> but um, we are trying to put out more and more step-by-steps as well. We'd love to hear from everyone. So if you do have any ideas, suggestions or comments, uh, leave them in the comments below. We'd just love to get your feedback. And um, I think that's about it for today. Until next time, uh, keep on painting and we will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.